Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to another edition of Photoshop for Video, your free weekly podcast that teaches you more about motion graphics and video production. Let's take a look at one of the unique features of Photoshop CS3, and that is the ability to work with 3D content in its extended version. Now, the nice thing about having 3D objects is that they give you a lot of flexibility when designing your motion graphics and broadcast designs. Photoshop itself supports 3D objects as a static layer, so you can't animate these, but you do get a lot of flexibility. Let's see how this could be useful. So I have an order screen here that we're designing for a television commercial, and we can go ahead and drop in a 3D model. Let's go ahead and do some quick work here. On the text info here, we'll put a slight drop shadow to help that stand off the page a bit. That's looking pretty good. Good. There we go. And let's add a 3D object by choosing Layer, 3D Layer, New Layer from 3D File. If we navigate into the folder here, we can go into a folder called Extras. And inside of there are a bunch of 3D models. Now, these models are included royalty-free with Photoshop. If you don't see them and they weren't installed by default, put your Photoshop install disk in and you can grab them from there. Additionally, there's lots of 3D models that could be grabbed off of Google's 3D warehouse, and you can use those too. Here's a real common one that's going to come in handy, and that is a DVD. So we go ahead and select the object file here and click Open, and it brings it in. Now, this is a 3D layer, so if we select that layer and double-click, you'll see that the 3D tools actually appear up top. And so now we can play with this object. You could rotate the object or the camera. Let's go ahead here and rotate this around a bit. There we go. And notice how we could position that how we want. If we look at the back side, it's silver, like a real disc. There we go. Get a little bit of an angle to it. And I want to go ahead and free spin that. So let's just rotate it this way. Notice how we could rotate it on different axes. There we go. We can go ahead and reposition it within the frame, as well as move it closer or further away, which is essentially going to perform like a scale. There we go. And let's just cant that a little bit more. Good. Now, when you're satisfied with it, you can go ahead and simply click the Apply button. You also have the ability to pick from different preset views that could be stored with the model. Additionally, you have the ability to play with its settings. Currently, this is using lights built into the file, but you could choose things like white lights, hard light, etc., and you'll see how the model behaves using this. Usually, it's going to use the default render mode, but there are other render modes available. Sometimes I'll use the wireframe render modes when working with architectural models or automobile models and you want to show sort of a schematic view. This works fine, so we'll leave that on default. And I'll go ahead and click the checkbox to apply it. Now, if you look at this, you'll see that there's also a texture layer being mapped to the surface of that DVD. And this is much like a smart object. A simple double click will open that up and bring it up. We can now go ahead and select a new label. So maybe you've designed a label to print out on your inkjet disk printer or your Bravo machine. We can grab that, copy it to the clipboard, and paste it in. A quick command or control T for free transform, and you could scale that into position as you need it for the disk. There we go, that looks good. Let's just fill this background layer with white We'll check our centering by grabbing the Move tool and clicking Align Horizontal and Vertical Centers, Layer, Flatten Image, Close, and Save. And you'll notice when it switches back that the disk label automatically updates. Now, that's working really well, but what I'd like to do is create a little bit of a shadow on this. So we'll add a quick outer glow to get a little bit of separation. Let's pick a dark color, and we'll set that to normal mode. 
and that just helps us get a little bit of separation on the edge. And then we'll go ahead and create a bit of a cast shadow. Command click will load the selection and we could choose select transform selection. I'm going to go ahead and condense this down and we'll right click and choose skew so we can go ahead and offset this a little bit like a cast shadow to the right. A quick apply, make a new empty layer and we'll fill that with black. There we go. Run a little bit of a Gaussian blur to soften that. Filter blur, Gaussian blur, soften that up nicely. Set it behind the disc and lower its opacity to about 60% using the multiply blend mode. And we get a nice realistic shadow that's being cast back behind the disc. And there you have it. Use of a 3D model to complete a graphic for use in a broadcast spot. Works really well, and if you expand your library of 3D models, you really have a lot of flexibility. We'll take a look at 3D models one more time next week, so be sure to tune in for our next episode of Photoshop for Video. I'm your host, Rich Harrington, and I invite you to check out the resource blog and book of the same name at photoshopforvideo.com.